we have our, uh, this is, so on the top, top left, you see the initial, the additional requirements. And then we have the entities, uh, that we already created in the, uh, initial ERD. So what I'm going to do really quickly is just put those, uh, relationships back in. Uh, so let me move this a little bit. Okay. So we had, now we had, uh, let me do this. So we have member and item checkouts. There was one, zero to many. Uh, item checkouts had many to one to many with product items. And that was our, uh, let's see, it's kind of a little sloppy. What I'll do is uh, go back, do this, like that. Uh, product and product item was one, one to many, right? Like that and um, okay and it looks like we're we're kind of set from here okay so this was our initial one and now we're going to think about how we're going to extend it to bring in the initial the additional requirements that we got when we clarified uh what we're going to do so okay so the so again top down in addition to books and mall, library also has periodicals so a magazine that kind of multiple issues uh, many copies of the same periodical issue. So the way I'm going to actually decide to keep track of this, um, okay, so first we should step back and actually understand uh, what uh, what that means. So you can have a magazine, which is going to have multiple issues, then an issue can have multiple copies. So that's sort of an, an additional level to what we already have here with product, where um, so let's say a magazine is going to be People, the People magazine, right? Um, and then there's multiple issue. There's multiple issues of the People magazine, right? So there's one for September, October, November, December, for every, every year, right? So every let's say every month there's a new there's a new issue. Then each issue can have multiple copies. So so that since that's three levels, we basically only have two levels here so far. So if we said the most granular one was keeping track of multiple copies, so that's sort of level three. So I can say that uh, level three is here. Uh, product item is three. So then we could, if we went one more back, so every month's issue is two. Uh, um, so every month's issue is two. So that's the second level, but we don't have an, a, the first level to keep track of, uh, just people magazine or something. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to track it as is another entity called product line. So product line could be, let's say the, um, actual magazine that's publishing multiple issues, or, um, it could be like a book that has multiple, um, it could also be a book that has multiple uh, issues. So let's say Harry Potter, right? So Harry Potter can be our product line. The individual books, uh, parts one through seven are going to be the product. And then the multiple copies of each individual part is going to be product item. So you see, so this is sort of going to be our level one if we went in that same uh, uh, granular order, right? So, okay. So we're going to have multiple, uh, multiple products within our product line, right? So... You're going to have multiple within one and then how many, and then we're kind of going to say the same thing where if there's a product, if there's a product, that's the only time you're going to keep track of the product line. So our lower bound is going to be one. Um, okay. So now this sort of takes care of, uh, let me just, oh, actually let me move this a little bit so you can see a little better. Um, and then I'll also erase this stuff here. Okay. So there you see sort of our product line and product relationship. So, uh, so this is very top level, number one, all the way to the most granular, which is going to be our number three. Um, okay. And then if we sort of keep going from here, uh, library keeps track of authors and publishers, right? So for authors and publishers, uh, let's say that we're going to have that be an attribute or have that joint at the product level. Right. So over here, uh, over there. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to create two entities. I'm going to create publisher. And then I'm also going to create author. So these are two separate entities. 
So those join, don't join to each other, but they basically join the product, right? And uh, a publisher can publish multiple products and author can write multiple products. So, uh, so let's say that. And then we're going to say that. So they both have a one to many relationship with product. Right. Um, and one, and another way to think of this is again, let's, let's use Harry Potter as an example. So actually, I'll, we kind of know who the author is, but let's say you have a book with multiple parts. So the multiple parts are going to be here in product. Um, and what you could say is that, uh, each part might have multiple authors. So not, it's not that everybody who wrote part one is involved in part two. It might, it might be different if authors change over the years, um, different people extend it and so on. So that's a use case you might have to handle. So this design would help us handle that where, uh, this is going to keep track of authors at an individual product level. Um, and since it can change, um, that's why I'm deciding to keep track of it at the product level instead of product item or at product line. All right. Um, and again, so again, so that's a design decision I just made. Uh, if I were in an actual whiteboarding interview, I would have sort of talked to my interviewer about that and said that I'm deciding to put publisher and author like this because of X, Y, and Z. All right. Um, okay. So we're good with author and publishers. Uh, moving on, library memberships are given to members. So, okay, so it looks like what we're gonna have is a member, is a membership type. Membership type um, entity. And that is what's going to join to member. Um, and actually I'll put it this way so it's a little bit more clear, but uh, one member uh, one member is always going to have one membership type, right? So you're not going to have multiple, so they're only going to have one. But a membership type, there can be multiple members with the same type. So that's going to be a many. And what we could also say is that we're only keeping track of the uh, possible membership types that people have. So what we can do is like have we'll have a one as the lower bound. So a one to many relationship between membership types and member. Um, okay. And if we went to our, uh, last one, uh, sorry, not last one, but, uh, so if we went down require, uh, next, next requirement was each year has a member, next number of books. Uh, that sounds like that's an attribute. So that's going to come into membership type, but I don't need to have that in my conceptual design because that's an attribute. Um, next requirement is, uh, database also tracks employees. So employees is going to be a type of member. All right. So it's not necessarily a membership type, but it's, um, we'll, we'll think of it as another entity because let's say in addition, so for a member entity, there's certain attributes that the library is going to keep track of. But when someone's employee and an employee, they might keep track of other attributes that they don't track for other members. So because of that, I'm going to have an employee as its own entity. So that's going to be a different entity and that's basically going to join uh, to members somehow, right? And so one employee is going to have one, only one record as a member, um, right? So it's going to have, it's going to be one-to-one -one where an employee is only a member one time. So actually what I'll do is sort of move this so it's a little easier to see. Um, let me just put that back like this. Um, that's and employee is going to join to member and it's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship where a member will only be a member may be joined to one employee but it's not necessarily obviously not every member is going to be an employee so the lower bound is going to be zero um but if they are connected it's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship um, but for employee to member, it's going to be one is going to be the upper and lower bound because every employee has a membership and uh, they they only have one membership. They don't have multiple. Um, then the last requirement there you see is the late fee penalties. Um, again, that's going to be that's just going to be an attribute of the membership type. So I don't really need to keep track of um, another entity for that. Um, okay, and this kind of looks good to me. Where again, I would kind of step back, uh, talk to the interviewer, and see 
if they have any feedback, what they think. But from our requirements, this sort of satisfies our need, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the slides. Okay, and this was our additional requirements that we sort of just went through and did the exercise for. And we end up with this as our conceptual model, right? Um, and basically, uh, so you could uh, pause the video here, uh, take a screenshot if you wanted of uh, the neater design. But basically, this, this is the additional uh, entities we added in. Product line, uh, which is a higher grain than product that's going to be tracked uh, it's going to track periodicals, or we use Harry Potter as a, as an example to um, sort of explain what the relationships are. Uh, publisher and author is tracked at the product level, and we have an example there we talked about. Um, and like before, uh, member is still, so the things that stays the same, a member is still borrowing uh, product items through uh, item checkouts, uh, mem but we also added the membership type. Uh, membership type entity, and we have employee tracked as a member as well through that other entity. And the additional uh, attribute details that were on the page uh, in those requirements, we're going to be tracking through the uh, membership. Uh, we're going to be tracking in the membership type entity. So, and that's pretty much it. So after that, this is basically our complete conceptual model, right? So we keep going, and then next thing we'd go into is a logical model, right? So from here, uh, we wanted to ask ourselves, what are the attributes you want to add to the conceptual model? So basically, if we went back to our requirements and we sort of only took out the details about attributes, uh, we would see, we would see how we needed to extend our conceptual model to bring in the attributes. Basically, what attributes are we going to add there? So things like, uh, copies being checked out, historical record that tells me about date attributes that are needed. Uh, the thing about uh, max number of books and late fee penalties, those are attributes for membership types um, and, and uh, employees having their own membership tier. So that's uh, a join you're going to have to the membership type dimension, right? So again, go back to our whiteboard and basically extend the conceptual model to add in the attributes.